Well, hello. I'm in my backyard, and there's one of my cats, Hamilton. And I thought, it's such a pretty day, I don't want to be inside at my computer much longer, so I think I'm going to come outside and show anybody who might be on Periscope my backyard. Now, I'm in Salinas, California, and I absolutely love to garden. It's kind of bright out here. Hopefully, you're not having a problem seeing what I'm showing you. And it's um, a beautiful day. It really is. I think we're about 70 degrees here. It is um, July 28th, I think. Plane going overhead in 2015. And my name is Susan Gerbic. And I'm known for a lot of work on Wikipedia and science and general science education and so on. But one of my other passions is my garden. I really love to garden. My mother and um, was raised in Arkansas. And back when she was there, she they always had a farm. They always had a garden because they were poor. Oh, hello, my cat wants to say hello. This is Ariadne. Ariadne, look at everybody. Hi. There's a butterfly, so she's a little distracted because there's a butterfly going by here. So my mom always had a garden because that they had no choice. They were extremely poor. She was born in 1922. And I remember asking her, Mom, what was the depression like? And she says, Susie, there was no depression in my area. We were poor all the time. We didn't know no different. <laughs> so, of course, everything was, they did a lot of gardening. And they made their own everything back there. So, I want to show you a little bit of my garden. I find this very peaceful, very relaxing. So much better than uh, dealing with people on the internet. So, I'm recording this on Periscope, which was something that Richard Saunders showed me at TAM, The Amazing Meeting. And um, I'm going to upload the video when I'm done. And so, of course, you won't be able to tell that I'm periscoping. But when you periscope, for those of few people who don't know what it is, people can ask you questions live. It's a little hard for me to see the screen because it is kind of bright outside. But it uh, allows people to ask me questions and they can give me little hearts and things like that. And at the moment, I have eight people watching. And somebody just sent me some blue love. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate that. The people watching the video won't know what the heck I'm talking about. So let's look at my garden. Lots of little things going on here. So recently I planted some, some trees in my backyard because I decided I wanted to have trees about time. And I like fruit to some extent, but I don't like a ton of fruit. So I decided, and I didn't know what kind of variety to get. So I got some trees that are four, four at a time. And if you look at these trees, this one right here is a apricot, apricot tree. And one branch has, this is a royal rosa apricot. This whole branch will have a rosa, ro rosa apricot. This branch has a royal apricot. This branch is a tomcat apricot. And they're supposed to pollinize each other. And this is a Katie apricot. So I've only had this about three, four months. And I just trimmed it back today because it was getting a little unwieldy. And I want to keep it a small tree. So that's my apricot that hasn't produced any apricots yet. But eventually it'll have four different varieties of apricot in each, on it, each branch. And then over here I have a peach tree. And it hasn't produced anything. It's Like I said, it's about three, four months old. There is a peach here somewhere. I just saw it this morning. There it is. I don't know. Can you see that? But that's a peach that's still growing. And this has several different varieties of peaches on here. Now these plants are a little more expensive because there's four and one. You hear this birds coming out here. And this one is a myrrh peach. And then over here I have another variety. This is a Indian free, whatever that means. Here's a white peach, which is one of my favorites. And a frost peach. So 
when this gets going really good, we should have four different peach varieties coming down on here. So that's pretty interesting to be able to have. This area right here is a Concord grape and it has just gone wild. Look at this darn thing. I've had it here for a few years. And you can see the grapes are starting to come in. These are Concord grapes. Those are those little purple ones that you make um, jelly out of. And this structure, we just, it's a, it's a giant pergola we had. And it, what it does is it just supports grapes. I, I think I have one Concord grape on here and it's just massive. Every September I bring over my friends and we pick all the, the grapes on it. It's about September when it'll totally mature. And we're just so full that we just about puke. It's just so much grapes. Oh, look, here's some right here. Look, see here, they're starting to, to get ripe. That's, that's pretty awesome. Let me try one. And they have seeds in them. Mm, that was actually pretty good. First grape of the season. And then here's one of my cats, Hamilton. So hi, Hamilton. There's 12 people watching you. You're famous. Oh yeah, that's that's great. Thank you for licking yourself. At least you're not licking the parts that you're not politely should be doing. So here I am under the pergola. And you can see up in here is all the conquered grapes that are growing down here. And I had a Chardonnay grape right here. And I've never had anything come out of that. I don't know if I don't have a mate to it. You know, maybe it's not being uh, pollinated correctly. But for whatever reason, I've never had anything produced on it. And I don't feel like taking anything out because it's already going crazy as it is. But it doesn't really matter. See, you can see up in here all my grapes. So the weather in Salinas, California, if you've never been here, is pretty mild. Typically, we're about 70 degrees year-round. Here, I'll let you look at my cat. And it's a little bit mild. Uh, we don't have a lot of rain, but we have some dewy mornings. Well, I guess there's something going on in the church behind me. And we have, we have, um, you know, it's pretty mild. Salinas is known as the salad bowl of the world. We grow an awful lot of the strawberries, the lettuce, the artichokes, um, the broccoli, onions, carrots, things like that, that most people, you know, will find in your grocery stores. You'll, you'll find an awful lot from Monterey County or Salinas Valley. The weather's mild. We have really, really good soil here. And that's because we have an underground river that runs through the area. Oh, here's a jasmine. I love jasmine. One of my favorite plants. It smells so wonderful. And we have an underground river that just runs out into the ocean. It goes into Monterey Bay, which is nearby. And Monterey Bay has, um, it brings a lot of nutrients with it. Here's a kiwi plant that I planted a long time ago, back before I knew that you had to have a male and a female to pollinate. And the male, I had a male and a female and it, and it just killed off the female. So now I just have the male. I have a female located somewhere else, but she hasn't really been doing anything. So over here we have more jasmine. It smells fantastic. And look at all these tomatoes. They have such really good tomatoes. These are so, I planted them in a planter box, so they're not as they're not as uh, growing as well as they probably would if I planted them directly into the ground. But I don't eat a lot of tomatoes. I like the cherry tomatoes a lot, but I give these out to my friends, and I'm told that the tomatoes look at that. I'm told that. Mm -mm. The tomatoes that I give out are so amazingly good. Everybody eats my tomatoes. Back in here is, a, I'm sure this is a really gripping video for you, but these are my compost piles. And I get an awful lot of compost to have a garden this size. And what I do is I take these trash cans and I drill holes in the sides of them, as you can see. And then I cut the bottom off, and then I just put all our compost in there. I'm sure it's not really attractive seeing all that stuff, but I don't put any meat in there because you don't want to attract things like raccoons or anything like that. I'm in a city, but we do have raccoon problem here. Possums and raccoons, they come in through our cat door. And what I'll do is I will take, when I feel like it, not today because today is a, I'm going to the doctor. I have an oncology appointment pretty soon. 
But what you do is you just take your compost pile like this and you pull it up like so. And then you're left with a pile of dirt. And then if I grab my handy dandy thing here, you'll see that it's already composting. You gotta keep it kind of wet and it hasn't been really wet. There's my little fork, a little dusty, sorry guys. And if you look inside here, I screen this out. It doesn't smell, well it smells maybe like dirt. There's some eggshells and you can see after two or three times of turning this, you'll end up with this beautiful, amazing dirt. Just incredible. I'll call it black gold. And then what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll mix it up and I'll put it back into this container that I just pulled it off. And then the cycle repeats. And I will turn bananas and, and potato peels and everything else into really, really good mulch. I'm not mulch, but dirt. Down around here, I have some roses that are going a little crazy. I have some peppers. Lots of peppers. These have lasted me a whole year or maybe two. They're supposed to be annuals, but we don't, um, I just let them go. Here's some, oops, there goes one. I don't really eat them. I give them away to people, but we have peppers and there's beets and onions. Here's a nice onion coming in. I need to pull that up today. Some carrots. Here's another tomato plant. Nice tomato. And I've tried uh, growing oranges now. So I have different plants. I don't want them to go crazy because I know how these things can get if you put them directly into the ground. So I have different varieties of oranges. Here's some here that I have no idea if I know, I don't know when to pick them. So I've just been kind of letting them sit there. <laughs> they, I had one fall off the other day and it was ripe. So I guess when they fall off, that's when they're ripe. I'm not really sure. Here's some tomatoes again. And thank you, Rosanna MV, for talking, saying I have a beautiful garden. Thank you. Here's more tomatoes. Hens and chicks. These were always my favorite when I was growing up. I thought they were the most adorable thing. It's a it's a giant succulent, and then underneath, little baby ones grow. You can see some here. Little tiny ones grow underneath, and they're so fun. And then they get these beautiful little spirals that come up with the little plant uh, flowers on them. They're real pretty. Right now, it's not the season, and these look kind of icky right now, but they can be very beautiful. I have a window box. This is my office behind here, so I have a window box so that I can look out at uh, the garden. And then I have blackberries. My son really likes blackberries, so I planted some blackberries, and these can really go crazy if you're not careful. If you plant them in the ground, they'll just be all over the place. So you have to be careful. to put. I put them in a pot. And that way I can just see, you know, grow them. These are blueberries. A friend of mine turned me on to liking blueberries. And I got me a few blueberry bushes. And I just love these things. You can come out here and you just pick them and eat them. And I was out here earlier today. And I think I picked all the really ripe ones right now. But blueberry bushes are fun. Put them on your cereal or oatmeal. Here's another orange tree. And here's another blueberry bush. This one is the same variety as the other one. But it didn't quite have as many big blueberries on it. And here's another blackberry bush. You can see there's a few that we've been eating the, the moth and waiting for the red ones to go. And I've just put a trellis in here and letting it go. Oh my gosh, this grows, grows so fast. It just will take over. We'll go out of town for the weekend and I think it's a foot or two has grown on it while I'm gone. Here's another, here's another one of these trees I've planted that has a variety on it. This is a cherry tree and we haven't had any cherries yet. It's only a few months old. But it's got several varieties of cherries that grow on the one tree. It's just, you can see down here, there's a little thing. Lapin's, Lapin's cherry, Van cherry, and a tartan cherry. I have no idea, you know, one cherry from another, so it doesn't matter. Some plants I can see out of my bedroom window that I have. And then this one has given me a few. It's a plum tree. And we've had a couple varieties of this already. And it's got several different uh, plums on it. It's got L-A-R-O-D-A plum, whatever that is. And then over here, we have a beauty plum. And I'm not seeing the tag for the other two. But there's two more types of plums on this tree. And so they just grow. And they... they um, 
fertilize each other. And it just works out really, really well to have our um, a variety of plums on one tree. So it just saves some room. Here's some more hens and chicks. And that's my backyard. I'm sure that that was thrilling. <laughs> Thank you guys so much.